Steven and Larry and we're talking Swish. Welcome everyone again to another edition of Talking Swish. Larry here as always and next to me is my co-partner in crime. It's Steven Dykeman. Steven, how are we doing? Good, man. Good. Uh... Excited to have the day off tomorrow, midwinter break, so that's that's cool. We're doing a nice little Sunday night podcast here, and yeah, we both we both played some some competitive magic this weekend. We'll talk a little bit about that. We'll we'll talk about some standard and the very likely impending Euro ban, and yeah, we've got some good stuff on the docket yep. today. So today is going to be a nice little. <coughs> um, we're going to try to get um, Raymond Perez on this week. We had some sp- scheduling conflicts this week. So we'll definitely go ahead and try to knock that out for this week. Um, who knows? Maybe we'll be able to knock it out tomorrow. Who, we'll, we'll see. Um, I'll talk to Ray. We'll try to get something worked out. Sweet. Regardless, um, we're here in the current time. We're going to talk about a lot of things. As everyone might have seen from the grapevine, Euro is coming to the end. Uh, so to get a little backstory, Magic is releasing a, a thing called the Secret Lair, which it's little collector edition stuff they do. Well, this one is based on Giants. Mm. So it had like Primeval Titan, but Euro is a card. For legal reasons, they had to include some information in that. They can't legally sell this product, and then when they have a pending ban that they didn't have announced. So in a little um, footnote, not a little footnote, but a little um, disclaimer, we'll call it. They were like, hey, just so everyone's aware, we have been watching. Euro is about to be banned in Historic, Pioneer, and Modern. And we're going to be ta- we're taking a close look on Legacy. But we just want to give everybody a heads up. That the this is the plan as of right now. Okay. Um, and they have to do that. Yeah. Um, for people that don't understand why they have to do that, think of it like this. I was telling Steven this earlier this week. Imagine if you're going to a concert, you want to go say, see Beyonce. You're excited to see Beyonce. You paid $150 to go front row seats to see Beyonce. And then the promoter was knew that Beyonce canceled because she has laryngitis. It's been known. But the promoter doesn't say nothing. It still takes ticket sales. With the knowledge that Beyonce is not going to be there, but I'm going to take your money with you thinking that you're going to get to see this concert. Uh And then you get there and you'll be like, oh, Beyonce's not here. We've known the whole time. Yeah. It's the same thing. Like We had you buy these special Euro special edition cards where Euro's already at a very high price. It's probably like $60 or something like that, whatever it is these days. Um, Magic Online, for example, is like an eighty dollar card. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you go and you'd be like, "Oh, but we can't. We we're gonna just go ahead and ban it." Yeah. That wouldn't leave a good taste in everyone's mouth. Right. There would be lawsuits. I would imagine there'd be refunds. There'd be a big old fiasco. Yeah, many things Wizards doesn't want to deal with. On top of the fact that you know, um, Wizards they've they've had to ban a lot of cards in the past you know year two years or whatever and it's very important for Wizards right now to keep um, keep the longevity of their customers intact and try to make sure that people are still confident in their product period so doing stuff like this at least helps helps that side of things too which is really important I think for Wizards um, <clears throat> so yeah that, that'd be my my insight on it. No, 100% agree on that. Like, the confidence level, I know everybody wants to give Wizards crap for their creative team and all that, their decision-making. But you have to actually be on firm ground that this is a very good decision. And anybody that's saying, yeah, yeah, but they didn't make any announcement about Legacy, give it time. Valky just came out. We mentioned this last week. I hit them out of nowhere just like everyone else. That card is... People have to understand. (laughs) That card is so stupid. You're not going to have a good creative team if they're focusing on these eternal formats. Right, right. Yeah, I mean... uh, And then, remember, we've talked about this, too. The last time something like this happened with, like, breaking and entering, they fixed it pretty fast. Yes. and They fixed it pretty fast. And they're going to be... It's going to be a real change. Because this is not not how the card was meant to be played. We know that. Everyone who's playing with it knows that this is not... Um, how it was meant to be. And I think in uh, in hindsight, being 2020, now that we have time to think about it, now that the first wave is gone, I think actually it's going to not only... Here's my prediction. They're going to change the ruling so the mana cost is combined. Yeah. Which, that's fine. 
Now, I wonder if they're going to do a rule change for the ultimatum and standard. That's what I, yeah, I was about to mention that too. If they changed it for how it works in Modern and Legacy, will it affect how but it works? Off if it's in Modern and Legacy, it's based on mana cost. That yeah. doesn't do anything with Soul Tie Ultimatum or whatever the emergent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever it's the hell it's called. Um, I'm calling it Soul Tie Ultimatum. Yeah, everybody, everybody, knows what you mean. everybody in their mama knows what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. But that that's different because. It's so weird how you can do it in standard because you do that, you grab a monocolor card, but once it's on the stack, you get to pick which side. Okay. Um, but maybe they don't change that because they never changed how Torrential Gear Hulk worked with. Um, remember when you had the stuff you could flash yeah, back out? Yeah. They never changed that. That makes sense. So maybe they're like, hey, it costs seven mana to do that. Yeah. There's so many ways to interact with it. Yeah, we'll find it's out. It's not soon. turn two. We'll find out soon. Yeah. That's for sure. But I can see if they don't change that one because it's not turn two. Yeah. It's not turn one. It's very different. It's much like, more reasonable. Um. Oh, like here's another reason that they are going to be changing that. I'm going to pull it up really quick, and that's um over here. If we go on, we go on Facebook. Okay. Um. There was some results from Legacy and Modern today. Oh boy. Oh, the, how we, sweet are these results? Oh, be? these I'll are phone, beautiful. We're going to put this in our Google machine really quick. Okay. All right. Here's Modern. Yeah. Ready? 80 players, seven rounds. There's one seven and old list. It's Blue Red Prowess. It got third place. Oh, good for There's them. four six and ones, five and two, up to 16th. So here's the top 16 results. Top eight. You ready for this? Five of them were five color Valky. Okay. A blue red prowess, a four color living end, which is living in with Valky in the deck, and then a white red enduring ideal. The real MVP of this list, by the way. Um, he's playing enduring ideal, so he's the real MVP. Oh my lord. Then the top 16, there was four more Valky decks. No, my bad. My apologies. Six more Valky decks. <laughs> yeah. A Jun Burn and, and some green white boggles. What a sweet format, man. <laughs> Valky, boggles, burn. Four Sick. Four Modern. All right, you're right. You're right. Let's take a look at Legacy, right? So, it looks like the Legacy Challenge. No, that's just somebody that did well with them. Canadian Threshold. Proud of him. Good for him. I saw one. I just can't see where it went. Oh, oh, here we go. There we go. Here's an event. Um, it pretty much was all to Bold and Delver decks. Oh, fun. And that's another thing I want to mention. People talk about this stuff all the time for Untable, but they do need to finally just address and try to, like, dismember Delver a little bit. Because that deck's always, like, before now, it was just Delver everywhere. Like, percentage-wise, it's, like, the most dominated deck, right? Yeah. So, if the argument is you want your um, format to get healthier, don't you want to, like, address, uh, like, not address, but... Hit it with multiple things. If you're already going to take the time to try to fix it in this row, you might as well take, yeah. take this opportunity when you have it. Yeah, I have no idea personally what they would need to take. Do you think maybe like Ponder or Brainstorm would be the... It's probably Lightning Bolt because it gives them so much reach. <laughs> That's an inside joke for <laughs> yeah. those listening. Um uh, they they would not ban lightning bolt. I don't think ever. Lightning bolt is a very <laughs> fair magic card, but but I do I I I wonder. Poor if, burn. I I do wonder if brainstorm or ponder. Now they they technically I think have said before that they're never getting rid of brainstorm, so they probably wouldn't hit brainstorm. But I wonder if they hit ponder if that would help. But then obviously then you can just replace ponder with preordain, which is not as good, but it is still a very powerful cantrip. So I have no idea. I have no idea what would um, make it better. Here's a couple options. Mm -hmm. You could hit Arcanus. Sure. You could just hit Delver. That'd be, yeah. You could just say no more Delver in the format. Mm -hmm. You know, like, then the, my reasoning behind it, my the logic that I came with um, when I was thinking about it, is Delver doesn't really kill quick unless uh, you get the Delver going and you start chipping them away. There's not a lot of setup needed for Delver. People will say, you need to reveal a thing. Okay. Okay. In your, just in your four Brainstorm, four Ponder deck. Yeah, yeah, no, it's very hard to put that together. But you take that away, right? You get all that. You take Delver out the situation. Then the deck is relying on, if you're playing Rug, you would play like Tarmogoyf, things of that nature. Is there really a one drop that's going to really fit that mold? That you probably become Grixis and start playing Thoughts. So you probably turn more like the 
You'd be like an Arcanist Thoughtseize deck with really good cantrips and stuff, probably. Would be my right, guess. and then I'm thinking that might be worse than what uh, what on um, Blue Red Delver because this oh, is like be worse and, for sure. and Rug Delver. Yeah, and it'd be slower. It'd be more mid rangey uh, than yeah, it's, yeah. it's it'd already mid range. Yeah, it would just straight up. It's a tempo deck. deck right now. Is yeah. that the term that we? Yeah, would yeah, use yeah for that is a tempo deck for yeah. sure. Delver's so tempo and tempo. mid range is completely different. Yep, Your gameplay is different. Very. You don't play Thought Season tempo decks usually. That's not usually the plan. Pretty much never. Yeah. I know um, back when we were doing Legacy for Niagara, I know we, I had buddies, their biggest issue trying to design their decks or build their decks or whatever you want to call it, was trying to take Blue Red Delver and Grixis Delver and mixing them. Not a good route to go. No. Like, you can, playing Vapor Snag and Thoughtseize in the same deck is weird to me. It is really weird. I mean, Thoughtseize... So, the problem with Hand Hate Spells and Tempo decks is Hand Hate Spells by nature are tempo negative. You spend a mana and your opponent doesn't spend mana... So you're already, like, down mana when you play Hand Hate Spells. That's yep. something that um, Zach Allen talked about a lot when, when we would play together. And it, and it is a it is a true statement. Hand Hate Spells That makes are, a lot of sense. I've never actually heard negative. that argument before. Yeah, they are. They're tempo negative. You spend mana, your opponent does nothing. So your opponent has not invested any sort of resource into these cards. So even though, like, a card like Thoughtseize, you do trade a card, you are still, it is still tempo negative. You're down a mana, you're also down some life, but you do have the information of their hand, which is obviously really important. Um, but so, yeah, that's part of the reason that cards like that just don't really work in tempo decks. They don't make a lot of sense. The, the benefit of tempo decks is you get some cheap threats usually, and then you're able to use soft counters or disruptive things to kind of get you over the finish line and you usually don't win by much in tempo they're usually really tight oh, yeah. tight close wins i've played enough delver yeah. to understand that for sure yeah. um but yeah that's the thing um i'm going to wait i'm gonna be patient see what they do um i don't have any i don't have a horse in the race when it comes to legacy i don't have any do legacy I, events yeah. coming up they can honestly say we're gonna ban force of will and let combo run wild and i'd be like okay yeah um, I, I, we wouldn't care right now that's i would sure. If I play Legacy more, I could understand. Yeah, then we'd break it. But let's talk a little bit, turn our gears over to Historic, because yep. that's a big part of Euro's life right now. Yeah. Um, I'm, I made a tweet earlier today, which I stand by. I think Euro's ban is going to make people reflect on how bad Soltai is as a deck compared to what your other options Yeah. when you don't have Euro anymore. Yeah. People, we, people are going to be playing it. People are oh going to be like, oh, we could play Ultimatum in this format. Yeah. And then people are going to be like, oh, okay, I'm going to mux a shoe. Or I'm just going to play Mono Blue in freaking oh, this one. You're going to talk about unwinnable. You're never beating Mono yeah. Blue if you're freaking next trying to play seven drops. Sidebar, <clears> funny <throat> note, I was playing them so tight the other night. I played yeah. against that Mono Blue Snow. Mm, oh, buddy. Rocked. Yeah, I actually saw. Um, we'll have, we'll obviously talk about the metagame percentages and stuff later, but um, and one of the flights, Mono Blue six would and we're gonna, we're gonna talk about part of the reason that that deck did well and some of these other mono colored decks are doing well. Um, there's a there's one specific card that I think we'll both want to bring up that um, we're pretty high on right now that a lot of people were pretty low on before the weekend, I think. But I think people mm -hmm. are starting to. Starting to get how good the card is, so we'll we'll yep. talk about that yep. later. We'll definitely but. get into that. Well, back on um, sidebar close, back to the historic. I think Euro was a was a, um, a crutch for a lot of people. Yeah, I think they were just so hard on that they're like, oh, it's a it's a really busted card, which that's no argument. Yeah, yeah, it is. Euro, one of the most busted cards. It's so broken, yeah. Um, but with that being said, I have tried my <laughs> damnedest to not force myself to play that card. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of people. Uh, buddy yours, uh, ours, Jaren. He's a he's a prime example. You're forced, and you're you don't want to play anything else because this card's legal. Right, and it, it's understandable when these cards are legal. You want to play them. Yeah. Remember Jeskai Luca time. Yep. You want to play our things, but you knew you had to play Luca. You knew yep. you had to play things. But the big difference between those decks, Luca want, had a good win percentage. Yeah, Luca was actually Reclamation. Broken. Reclamation has was a, broken. So has a subpar win percentage. Yeah. Urza in modern was super broken. Like sometimes they're or whole gag. Like sometimes they're just very broken decks. Yep. And if you don't play them, you're giving yourself a worse chance, which mm -hmm. is not typically what you want to do. Exactly. But yeah, in Sultai's case, and we were starting to pick up on this well before yeah, we can go back. posted about it or, or anything else. I could pull up we, archive tweets we, about exactly. this. Exactly. We played zombies in Historic. 
beat Sultai like three out of three times in our in our videos. We played some other random deck. It's a sacrifice variant. We would beat Sultai. We just Auras. beat Sultai. Yeah, whatever. It didn't matter what we played. We beat Sultai all We're the time. We practically, the only thing that we probably couldn't have done is just played 60 lands. And we right. probably would have been a close match at right. this point. And then um, for a minute, I was playing some Sultai, and it was pretty good. I was definitely winning more than I was losing. But, you know, um, some of my some of my losses came to the fact that I had these random cards in my deck for mirrors, and they didn't do anything against other decks, so they didn't line up right when people were trying to, like, build their decks to beat the mirror. Um, also, one thing I hated about that deck, too, is, like, if I were trying to go up and rank, uh, it just took forever. The matches, like, took, like, oh, 45 minutes, 40 I minutes a piece. I think it was, like, such a trap to play that on ladder. Yeah, I, oh. hate, I hated playing it. It just, it, I, I would literally, I was trying to, like, every day get my 15 wins or whatever, and it was taking me, like, seven hours to, with Sultai, usually, to hit that mark. Like, I'd wake up, and I, I wouldn't be done playing Magic till like, 2.30 or 3 o'clock, and I'd be like, holy smoke. I just like, put in a work shift playing Sultai. Exactly, yeah, and then Mm -hmm. Yeah, a, a, a few a few days after that, I was like, oh, screw this. I'm playing, like, SAC again. I'm playing other stuff that wins way faster than this to just so I can do other things with my day and just it doesn't become a chore type of deal, too. Yeah, because once magic becomes a yeah, chore, that's, that's a slippery slope that you're yeah. right yeah. on. Um, yeah, that's my big thing. I don't want to, like, spe spiel like that this is a let's hate soul tide day or anything don't get wrong the deck the deck wins you're all along with a, some combination of pieces like this and stuff is very good the problem that deck loses a lot is because it has to play these bad hate cards for the mirror so much because everybody's on it that it loses to everything else yeah and unfortunately everything else is a large percentage still it is yep. it's hence the um, modern for example it's yep. starting to get modern s yeah where you can gear for this one deck and then end up failing in your big yeah. tournament. Yeah. Because, for example, um, I, I mentioned this all the time. I went to Vegas back when Hogag Summer was. I played 15 rounds both days. And I played Hogag zero times. Yeah. That's how magic works. It is. That's how magic works now, how magic works in the past, how it's going to work in the future. Mm -hmm. There is a thing in this in these old older formats that are big like this. This ain't standard. Historic may look close to standard, but it's starting to get a little large. Yeah. We have embraced that it's a pairing lottery. Yeah. Did you win the lottery or did you lose the lottery? That's what it's going to come down to. And then if you won the lottery, you still have to play well mm -hmm. because you're going to play against good players. Yeah. Magic is filled with great players that aren't known. Mm -hmm. um, you may think that they aren't good, but they'll come and they'll, they'll check you. Yeah. Believe me, I've been checked by some players at GPs where you'd be like, you don't, they're not known or anything. They don't look like they're super nervous. But then once the game starts, they're very good at playing Magic. Uh huh. That's how it goes. Looks can be deceiving, as they say. Yep. That's the thing. Like you, and then you play these uh, cards that are just dead. Like today, I played that Magic tournament, the little subreddit event. Yep. And I played Mono Black Aggro. I would thought seize my opponent multiple times a day, and I'd see Tails and Aether Gust. Yeah, cards that do nothing. Oh, Aether Gust was nice. Yeah. I was like, well, guess what's always going to be in your hand? Yeah, that. Like, yeah, no, I mean, it's, yeah, and, you know, the the we, we both played Auras for a minute there, too, and Aether Gust is equally as pathetic in that matchup, and Tails yep. End is, like, very medium. It doesn't counter Spirit Dancer. It does counter Sram and Luris, but, like, if you know they have Tails End or you drew the right half of your deck, it just it, what's it going to do? Counter a draw trigger? Like, it's horrendous. It's so I had a person, um, <coughs> Tails End, my activation on the uh, night today. I yep. was like, ooh, you bad dude. Yeah, nice. Like, kudos. Yeah, terrible. But so yeah, bad. So, so bad. those are the kind of things. That's why I'm... I personally think Euroban is going to help people that's been forced to play Sultai for way too long that they might have actually generated a better percentage of results for themselves if they wouldn't have been so struck on having to play that deck. Yeah. And honestly, it's all by choice. If you wanted to play, I can, no, nothing to stop you. Mm -hmm. But I feel like you were discrediting your success and your path forward by not trying to open up the doors a little bit and playing different decks. That's why I, I, I play Auras, I'll play Sacrifice, I'll play it all. I don't really care. I don't play Goblins because one, I'm not very good with that deck. I, I haven't played it enough to get really good with it either. I'm always afraid I'm going to put time into it then Mux is banned. Yeah. Um, and also I don't think the deck's particularly good in big events. Um, it doesn't seem, it always seems to have so much big numbers but now have so small a result. Yeah, it hasn't had huge success lately. I, I don't. I, the thing is, like, 
I don't feel like that, that that deck is not good against Sack. I don't think generally like it can definitely beat Sack, but I think you know Mayhem Devil is like very very annoying for that deck for a lot of reasons. Yeah, your mana, your your mana, your Skirk Prospector is horrible if there's a Devil in play. Um, Devil's just so good at checking all your like two two Lords and things. Um, I, I think the matchup's just tough, and then obviously Claim Claim and Priest and stuff are very very good against them because they're a creature deck. Yeah. So typically, I, I think Goblins has been kept a little bit in check by that, which is good. Um, I, I think that's good because Goblins definitely, you know, some people were screaming Mux's ban for a while. And if you didn't have a deck keeping it in check, that would maybe be the case. But while it's kept in check, then it, it's fine in the format. Um, well, we're going to wrap up this on Historic Talk. But before we wrap it up, Steve, give me two decks that you would think that's going to be good going forward in Historic. Give oh. me one deck that's already established and one deck that you don't think has gotten enough love that you think is going to, where Euroban is going to get some time to actually okay. get some light. Okay, um, so I think uh, I, I'm, I'm, I would play Auras. Auras mm -hmm. was really impressive. I would still play that deck. That deck's really good. Um so that would be the established deck I would go with, um, and then I, you know, th this one's this one is you know you could argue was established wasn't established, but I feel like blue white control gets way better when cards like Euro aren't in the format. Yeah, because of the play, resources. Yeah, um, you can play matching that kind of strategy is hard. so much easier, and not having to play mainboard graph diggers cage just yeah help help big because those are two um slots that you want to have back. Yeah. For sure. um, and there's actually a card we're going to be talking about that I think actually could be fit into that deck. But okay. we'll get there. Um, the decks I think um, that are already good. I'm I'm not going to say Auras because you already chose Auras. All right, yeah, makes sense. Um, I think God Pharaoh's Gift is a deck that... Okay. Um, oh, yeah, mono, are we talking about the Mono Black? Yeah, I like okay. the Mono Black yeah. variant. There might be like a Blue Black or something. But I think a Mono Black Gift is going to be a deck that was already established. Like, I kind of lost favor a little bit because Euro was in the format, which I, yeah. I honestly didn't think the matchup was that bad either. It but, wasn't. Yeah. Um, again, it I think wasn't. it was just the the whole I don't want to play it because it's not Euro kind of thing. But the deck that I don't think people give enough love, and I think um, I'm not going to name a specific one, but I'm just going to say non-company aggro. Whether it being Mono Red, Mono Black, and going forth. I think aggro decks... Get such a big like not advantage, but they get more of an edge with Mono, Euro. Mono Red was a was, is a big one. That, yeah, that, that, Mono Red. I, I didn't think about it. Yeah, Mono Red gets so much better because they, they have Bowman Carrier. They have all yeah. these great. That's cards. another deck that was literally main deck and cage. Like a lot of Mono yeah. Red decks were main and like, you, one. Cage. You're not gonna win. Like long That's term, so it's so hard That's to win because so Mono Red. Deck. Typically, Mono Red's card advantage is very minimal right. already. All you have is light up. Um. So, if you're going to take their card advantage and also put dead cards in their hand, they're going to lose a lot of game ones. Yeah. A lot of game ones. And honestly, like, it's... And then, not only do you have these dead cards, but even then they play Euro for three. Like, three life um, swing is a lot. Oh, it's huge. I mean, it's and, and, so And they, they're not even down a resource to do it. No, they're up, That's yeah, they're the, up a land, up life, up a land. Yeah, it's just... Oh, it was all about benefits for him. Yeah, so Mono Red, I think, gets... And they also have um, a new card that can, they can throw in their deck because they can easily, like, play some Snowlands. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. We'll get for there, sure. though. For but, yeah, those are my... That's my opinion on the historic format. But we talked about Soul Tie in Standard. And in Historic, I, my apologies. Let's talk a little bit about it in Standard because it was the deck of the week. Um... As we noticed in standard lately, it's been a flavor of the week, and then come tournament time, if people find answers to it, and that's a sign of a healthy standard it format. Is, yeah, that's good standard. We haven't had this while. Remember when reclamation was the flavor of the week? Two weeks later, it reclamation the is the, the flavor of the week. Always the flavor of the week. It was just the best deck. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about standard. I've played it a little bit. Steven, you've done it with some competitive turns. Um, yep. uh, you, your buddy has played it as well. Yep. So. Go ahead and give us a rundown. Um, talk about the deck in general. Like, how does it function? So basically, what what Sultai Ramp is looking to do is obviously it's looking to accelerate its mana with cards like Wolf Willow Haven, which is a two mana enchantment that can enchant a land, and then that land taps for one for its original tap, and then also adds an additional green. So it basically accelerates you a green mana. Um, the reason they're playing this instead of creatures is obviously this one is much, much harder to interact with. So it's just better than a card like Lotus Cobra or uh, the, the Florahedron. Um, 
So that's why they're doing that. Uh, then they're playing four Cultivates to, to again, accelerate mana, um, fix its colors so it can reliably cast Ultimatums on turn five or six. Um, and then, really, it's just a, a mid rangey control deck, honestly. It's playing the new Uncommon, the Binding, which is the four-mana enchantment that when it enters, you blow up a non-land permanent. Mm -hmm. um, then its second chapter gets you a forest out of your deck, any forest, so it can get Tri-Lands, which is awesome. Oh, and right. also, a lot of the lists now are playing a one-of red Triome, so they can find the Triome some and of them. cast Valky. Uh, yeah, I've seen all. some of them are playing up the four. Oh, some are okay. Some yeah. are really diehard. They want yeah. to just make. I mean, it makes sense. Cast. Bulky's I, crazy good. So. Bulky is a great card. Yeah, well, I, I don't. I don't. Bulky's not, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Bulky's Tibble, Tibble, fine. yeah. Bulky's fine. Um, Bulky, yeah. I've you know I've I've Bulky'd my opponent's Goldspan Dragon and then copied the Goldspan and then started attacking and yeah, just totally took over. Oh yeah. But but no, it, both sides are fine. Obviously, Tibble is ridiculous. Super super good. Um, so you do want to be able to at least have the option to cast that card. Uh, but anyway, so you're playing Binding. You're playing just some good solid removal. You're playing Cartless Axe, Eliminate, stuff like that. Um, and then the, the main idea of the deck is with uh, Emergent Ultimatum, which we've referred to as, as Sultai Ultimatum. Um, what it does is it gets three uh, mono-colored cards out of your library, and then your opponent picks one of them, you shuffle the one that they pick back into your deck, and then you cast the other two for free. So what most of the chains look like are almost always you go get the new extra turn spell that gives you an extra turn and then two 1-1 one, one birds. And then you go get either Kiora Best the Sea God and Vorinclex, which is a sweet combo because when, when the Vorinclex and the Sea God enter, you get it to the second chapter immediately and can freeze oh. a... I forgot it does that. Yeah. Um, I've never actually got those two together. Yeah, so that can happen, which is cool, because mm -hmm. then you get the 8-8, eight, eight, and you also get the freeze right away, and then you just get to the third chapter really quickly. Um, but you have that happen. Um, you can also, obviously, you go get Valky a lot, and they have to... If you, ca if you cast Valky, you can pick either side, which we've talked about uh, a few times already on this cast. So you cast Tibble. Um, but yeah, basically, uh, Voren Clex, Cure Best of Sea God, Valky, and the extra turn spell. And then sometimes you go get the Seagate Restoration, too, to just draw, like, six yep. or whatever and have a no, no limited hand See, anymore. never get to that point because whenever, yep. literally every game I've played with the deck, yep. I have grabbed the same three cards. I grab Valky, I grab extra turns yep. card, and then you, the third card, I guess, does change. Usually yeah. it's Cure's Best of Sea God. Yep. Yep. Um, people don't ever let, honestly, people scoop to me just, like, giving them this option because they're like, oh, he's going to have to bowl that cure as best as seed god. I can't win this game, which they're not wrong. No. Against aggro, sometimes I'll take, like, an extinction event or something. Yeah. Or I'll take the five-man on board wipe, whatever it's called. It exiles yeah. all three drops. Yeah. But, no, the whole case is, like, you're going to win nine out of ten times you cast that card. Oh, man. If yeah, you lose with it, it's hard. It's so messed up, man. Like, it, it's such a it's such a hard spot because you basically here are the here are the things that are going to happen. You're either going to get an absurdly powerful card and another turn with some bodies, or you're going to get two absurdly powerful cards. It's like always how it works. And then if you get the um, the debult, you get to activate it. Right. That's the pro That's the thing. It's like so. Usually they don't let you take the extra turn, and they just give you the two powerful cards. Sometimes they do give you the extra turn and the bulky, and it's just ridiculous. You just yeah, you plus can't do that. And, There's and, no and, way you yeah. can do that. Honestly, that it's how, if you do it right, that you should put your opponent in such a situation that they're not going to be able to come back from. Yeah. So that's the basis of how Soul Tie works. Yeah. Um, how to win with it. Um, as you mentioned, that's how you win with, with Ultimatum. Yeah. Let's say, hypothetically, we don't get Ultimatum. What's your best um, opinion on winning those matchups when you don't have Ultimatum? Well, so some of the some of the lists defer on what they're doing. Um, some lists are playing the, the seven-mana serpent that, like, makes... I forget the name of it. Coma? I think yeah, it's Coma. Coma. Yep, Coma. Uh, Coma, which is the seven-mana uh, giant serpent guy that makes more serpents on every upkeep, and then you can sack the serpents again and destructible. Some lists are, are playing the um, the vehicle, uh, the four The chariot. Four. Yeah, the chariot. That one's been falling out of favor. That one has fallen out of favor, um, but it's still in some lists. Some lists, yeah, of course. Um, 
I know uh, you had a list that was playing Ugin. I don't know if anyone okay, else no, was okay. playing any Ugins. My, no, let's let clarify. I wasn't playing Ultimatum. Oh, you didn't have Ultimatum? That wasn't an Ultimatum Oh, I didn't realize. No, 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 no. That was a straight-up Soul Tide list. That's fine. It was a Soul Tide control list of battle Ultimatum, but also have a chance to beat aggro. Okay, okay. I didn't Um, didn't look very hard at it. No, but it was was actually not Ultimatum. But it beat Ultimatum every time I played it, only because it it was geared towards beating them. It had so many counter spells, too, which is nice. Um, Yeah, I just... I love playing a bunch of Fortel cards. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Um, for sure. I build it based around open deck lists, though. So, yeah. um, Basically, though, the deck... If if you're not... If you're not winning with Ultimatum, you're probably winning with, like, a Vorinclex, just attacking. Um, You're winning with Tybalt... Uh, casting threats, doing things. So sometimes you can just get there with like a Yorion. Now again, some lists were playing a bunch of shark typhoons, so you can win with just a huge shark. Um, honestly, I feel like that's a that's probably a pretty good way to build the deck moving forward with typhoon, just because it's pretty sweet in the mirror to just have shark typhoon. Yeah. Um, but you've got that in some lists. Um, I know another list. I played against this weekend, had the land that you can activate and put counters on. Yeah, and, Crawling Barons. Yeah, Crawling Barons. Yep. No idea if that's actually good, but it, it was pretty good in the matchup I was playing. Um, was certainly a thing to worry about. But basically, I mean, the deck the deck doesn't have a ton of win conditions outside of Ultimatum. Yeah, um, uh, well, and we'll be getting to that. Yeah. I got a little pinpoint on that. We'll yeah. go in, in a minute. Uh, very um, slow. Very slow. To um, I think your best route to win, if you want to play the deck effectively, you need to set your turns up to find Ultimatums. Yeah. That's going to be your best way to win. Yeah. Um, your percentage of winning goes up so much when you play that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, if you use some time to stall, just stall out. Do what you can to not give give your opponent some any like ability to kill you before a certain time frame. Yeah. Um, against aggro, one ultimatum will usually end the game. Almost always. Yeah. Um, that's the thing. Just don't die. That's yep. why a lot of lists play play three to four extinction events, and then they play two copies of the five mana board wipe along with heartless axe eliminates. Yep. You have to respect aggro. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it don't matter, yeah. which we'll be getting into um, in a brief moment we as will. well. Yeah. But good ways to beat the deck. I wanted to touch on this one because I was watching streams last night while playing casually and stuff. And I watched a few people. One was Jeff Hoagland. I'm not the biggest Jeff Hoagland fan in the world, but I do think he's a solid player overall. I was watching him play a Jun thing, and... He touched on something that made sense, and I heard watched another streamer, and he made the same like analysis on it. If you take Ultimatum out that deck, that is a bad Magic deck. That deck is not good. It has similar um, characteristics of um, Soul Tide from Historic, but even worse because it don't have Nissa. Yeah. Um. So what he was doing, he was playing a Judd Mid Range deck. Another thing, Clothis. Clocks them because that deck has no ways to remove enchantments. Clothis is really good, man. That card's a very underrated magic card. Yeah. Honestly. One of the more fair. underrated cards in the standard format is yeah. Clothis. But he was playing a Jun mid range deck, right? And um what's also cool with um what's the dragon's name? Gold Span Dragon. It also gets those tokens when you target it by yourself. When you target it. Oh, that's sweet. I didn't realize that until I was watching it. But yeah, he was playing um, a full grip of Necromanches in the sideboard. I, was gonna, I figured that's probably um, what he was doing. Yeah, and he was just removing that card. And then you probably hit Valky afterwards. And then yeah, Valky or the extra turn card. Yeah. One, one of those. Whatever you like. Yeah, man, great card is, you get all that information. If they're that's... not on like the Chariots, which you said are falling out of favor, and they definitely are, if they're not on the Typhoons, once you hit... If you you hit Valky and the, the ultimatum, ultimatum they have almost no threats at all. I'm they giving have them all four and flex and a couple birds off their extra like, turns. I'm gonna spitball a percentage. Don't take this to the bank by any means because this sure. ain't accurate. Okay. But in my just like off the top of head, I would imagine they're like a 15 20 percent chance of winning that matchup without if you t- if you remove all eight copies of ultimatum and Valky yeah. slash the bolt. Your percentage has to be low, like low. Yeah, they, I mean, you just don't. I didn't want to give them like ten percent or less because I feel like they could still sneak out a win. But I feel like twenty percent is like a realistic around around the twenty thirty percent range has to be correct. I don't have any way to actually figure out how to prove this. 
But that is a good way to battle that deck. Another way to beat that deck is don't let Ultimatum resolve. Value your interaction with that one specific card. Yeah. Um, of course, if your um, Soul Tie opponent is good, they're going to make that very difficult. Yeah. Um, I've had opponents when I was playing Soul Tie was trying that when I was playing up against like, like Blue Red Temple, which we can get, get into that deck briefly in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I ran circles around that deck. He thought the counter shows were one. People don't know how to do foretell correctly because that is a very skill intensive ability. Mm-hmm. Um, because sometimes people foretell cards when they shouldn't. Like agreed, yeah. it's a very hard thing to do, yeah, and that comes with time. Yeah. That I think that's one thing Zach Allen made a tweet back when on the set first dropped. He thinks foretell is one of the most skill intensive mechanics we've had in a long time. It's yeah, and it's I might cool. not disagree with that. Yeah, um, even though I like disagreeing with Zach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I I agree with that uh, for the most part. I played a little bit of blue red, um, and yeah, there are, there are spots where you like foretell the counter spell, and then your opponent does something end step, and then you can't cast the counter spell because you just foretold it, uh, which is obviously a, a horrible situation. So you really want to be smart about the timing of when you foretell that counter spell specifically. Obviously, the foretelling of the draw spell is important too, but it, I think you know is a little less less awful. Uh, can punish you less than than the the counter spell, but either way, yeah, no, it's it's definitely skill intensive. Um, Fortel is a really cool mechanic, and and we'll be we'll be seeing uh, these these blue cards especially continue to see plenty of play throughout their standard life. Yep, I agree. And then um another way that you want to beat Soul Time, find the correct deck. Yep. We're going to talk about some percentages now. Yeah. And these percentages came directly from the Star City um, PTQ, we're going to call it. I guess that's technically what it is. It's a PTQ you had to qualify with. They had qualifiers over on Friday and Saturday. Yeah. Just those two days, right? I believe. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Just Friday. So Saturday. Friday and Saturday, they do qualifiers. If you were, if you qualify for the invitation, you got to do a qual. You get to do the qualifiers for free. If not, they're six bucks. So it isn't like they break the bank. Yeah. Um. They have various price structure. We're not here promoting Star City. Ain't paying us by any means, but yeah, yeah. I would definitely recommend doing them if you have. If oh, yeah, you they're want really tournaments. Fun. Yeah, they're a good time. They're fun, and if you were a person who was active on the SCG tour, your events might be free. Like ours are free, and that's why you know I try and I try. I'm trying to this last season. I didn't play in that many. This season, I'm really going to try and play in at least one every week because it's just silly not to if if I. Am enjoying the format, and that they're free. Yeah, exactly. They're free. Like, yeah, I am free unless I in. unless I am literally not having fun with the format. It'd be silly to not play. So, mm-hmm. so we're gonna talk about some of the um, top decks that were in the in the tournament. So, Sotai Ultimatum was first. They had sixty one copies today. Yep. Um, is there a percentage? Yep. There was seventeen point fifty seven percent of the field. So still high. Um, definitely. Here high. was their overall record. Yep. Now this, yeah, this should be pretty. Interesting. They were, I'm gonna um, guess they had a losing record. They did. They yep. had one hundred thirty seven wins and one hundred fifty three losses. Yep. So here's the thing, right? Uh, Sultai. In a way, Sultai almost reminds me a little bit of last season. How Teamer was really, really good for a week or two. And then it kind of fell off because the format became more hostile to it. We might see that happen again with Sultai. I could definitely see that because Sultai, like you said, last week was like open was literally opening week of the new format. Sultai ended up being flavor of the week. This week, everyone picks up on that it's flavor of the week, so a lot of people gravitate towards it. I know um, in in the article I, I wrote this week for our site. Uh, I I predicted it would be twenty to twenty five percent, so it, it was a little lower than that. But it was this close. is it was this close is the percentage I, I like for standard. Though. You know, these are good percent. Yeah, uh, number two was seventeen point twenty nine percent. That was Gruel Adventures. Yep, just an oldie that. but goodie. Yeah, I does, played that last weekend. Yeah, one and one of them does, does what it's supposed to be yep. doing. Has a, some of, some lists have some new cards. Very clean deck. Yeah, um, if they're playing new cards, it's usually gold span. Some are playing that. We've uh, we talked um, about Kyle Bogamus is playing the three three post dwarf. Yeah, and, it lets. You, it names. lets you um pay one the boast, and it lets you um be changes power to the highest one power plus, plus one. one. Yeah, one so plus if you one. have a Question love struck beast, beast. love struck, he's a it, six three. Yeah, which yeah. is quite huge. good. That's huge. It's yeah, a big deal, like especially when boy, especially with a cleave on it. I was gonna say with a, in a cleave deck. Yeah, he'll murder people. Um, that's, 
Just number three, going. guess what number three is well looking. Uh, I'm going to guess it's mono white. Mono red. Ah. Mono red is number three at 14.98%, almost 15%, and 52 copies. Oh, my apologies. Gruel Adventures was 156 wins at 161. So it was just some shy of 50%. Just shy of 50%. Um, mono red was 56% match win percentage at 166 and 139. So that's pretty good. Snuck up on people, man. Um, mono red's great at doing that. And then we have mono white. <laughs> yep. Which that had 30 copies at 8.6% of the field. Okay. And it had 89 wins and 80 losses at 53%. Okay. Um, Demir Rogues came at 47% win percentage with 18 copies, 5% of the field. Uh, makes sense when you have all the aggro decks above it. Yep, and oh. uh, yeah, that, that was the deck I ended up going with this weekend was Rogues. And although I, I, I do think it was a fine deck to pick because of Sultai's popularity, I did not anticipate the mono red or the mono white spike at all. Not at all. And Guess what deck had the best win percentage? Was it mono red? Because so far, what we've said nope. was mono red. Just Sky Cycling technically has the best percentage wise because <laughs> they had two copies Jesus Christ. in the tournament, and they were a fourteen and four overall. So they That's both six. went. They both went seven 17. and two. That's a respectful record. Yeah, very. That's oh, a course, very respectful record yeah, in a yeah, nine yeah. round tournament. Yeah, and yeah. Jeff Hoogland was one of them, by that's, the way. That's sweet. I, I did pay attention to like that's known sweet. people because um, Croaky went X two X three. I forget which one. Did he play red white again? I have no clue. Okay. Um, or he but, did mono red and the and the. But we can check. <laughs> yeah, we definitely can. But yeah, no. Um, again, so yeah. Oh the, no, Jessica Cycling was second. Was it in second? the tournament? Oh okay. So that means that... So Hoogly might have lost in the end? Or... Okay. But regardless. Yeah, regard so that will also maybe... So that means one of them only had like one loss and the other guy had three losses. Oh, no. Hoogly was on four-color cycling. My four apologies. Four-color cycling, okay. Um, that's what it was. And okay. then... Now, I'm curious. Is it four-color cycling just because he's randomly playing memory leak that he cycles in his deck but can't actually cast? Take or, a look here. Yeah, we'll have to take a gander at the list and see if it's actually anything special or if it's just called for color because he's cycling uh, cards that are all over the place on the color scheme. Mm, <clears throat> looks like the traditional cards. Yeah. Has memory leak. Has memory that. leak. Yeah, so they just call it four color because there's memory leak in there. Uh, I don't know if he can actually cast it or not. Um, sometimes they can, sometimes they can't. Yes. What's this try him do? Yeah. There's, let's take a gander. Really, we'll, we'll take a closer look. Just so yeah, the just, listeners know. Yeah. If, if, but basically, it doesn't look like it's anything special. Just your classic cycling. Okay, no black man. Oh, yep, here. Okay, it is. he has he all has, land. He has three lands. Three, okay. four lands. Four lands that can add black. So he does. He does want to play the black man. Yeah, he wants the option at least. So there, there are pathways so he can pick to just. Do the other I color. can actually respect that. Oh, I can too. It's almost free. Yeah. It's, it's almost free. Um, in fact, it might even just be free, honestly. I, I don't know. I, we would have to look a little harder and think more about it. But it, it's very close to free, and Memory Leak is a sweet card. So um, getting to look at your opponent's hand definitely matters in spots. That's um, a, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Kudos to him for doing well with yeah. the deck. Black Mana can cast Lurus too, which is relevant. So. But yeah, um, based on the percentages, I'm I'm going to give the format an A right now. Um, it's fine. Because it's, it's healthy. It it's feels fun. healthy to me. Um, I'm always okay when aggros are dominant. I wouldn't even say they're dominating, but they did well. Yeah. Oh, just for people that don't know, um, it does look like Mono White did the best out of everything. They were 11-0 and in the tournament. So Mono White ended up, take that as you leave it, because Magic's weird like that. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to say Mono White's the best deck, but... It sure put up some good results today. It was one of the best this weekend, no yep. question. It had a good win percentage. And that's the thing. Good standard formats fluctuate every week. Yep. Um, it was like that in this last format. Yep. The problem people had with it is it got bored. Yep. People got bored with it. And that happens with standard. Standard gets solved. Mm -hmm. That's the nature of the beast. It's a small format. Yep. As of right now. It gets larger as time goes. Yep, definitely. Um, based on the results... Um, just to go through, let me go through the top eight. Uh, and this is based off the very end. This isn't like the actual top eight participants. Yeah. All right. So where is the top eight? Uh, bear with me. I'm trying to navigate melee over here. 
All right, it looks like Gabrielle Silva with Mono White Aggro went 12-0. Abe Corrigan took 11-1 um, in Mono White, took second. So um, the finals was a Mono White mirror? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I know you love it. Um, <laughs> Renegold Egg was with Just Guy Cycling in third. Adam Cohen, Sotai Ultimatum. Tony Ramos Pascual, Sotai Ultimatum. Thierry Ramboa, Sotai Ultimatum. Um, I am going to butcher this person's name. What is this? Noriyuki Mori? Okay. Team or mid range, and I want. I wonder if this is just like the. Oh, we'll look at it when. Oh, here we go. Um, it's just looking like the adventures. Yep. Just the adventures. So, ooh, a midnight clock. Sexy. Um, and then Daver Dederquick. Well, I'm mono white aggro. So three mono whites, three soul ties, a just guy cycling, and a teamer in the list. So basically four aggro and four four mid range. Yeah. Yeah. Now did the the teamer deck also have ultimatum? Or was it, um, uh, let's take a look at that. Yeah, one. Yeah. Just a, just one. Ooh, one miscast. Wild. Okay. Is that the counter? That counters instance, I think, right? Yeah, is it like instant sorceries, like, but it I think makes it's, them pay three or something like that? Or no? That might be right. Yeah, counter instant sorcery unless they pay three. Sick. So it's a dispel. Most time, kinda, yeah. It's it's good. It's good. It's yeah. Like no, it's a, a fine card, especially in this format. I don't think about that card too much because it usually um, those kind of linear counter spells I try to ignore Dispute's for the most always, part. Dispute has just been better than that card exactly. in the formats. So yeah, but that might be a little bit better because you're countering an ultimatum. Yeah. Um, unless they pay three. It also counters Bone Crusher Giant, which is really oh, that's important. huge, really especially in the in um when format. you're facing against the aggro decks. Yeah. Protecting your innkeeper just by miscasting mm -hmm. somebody would be disgusting. So, so yeah, far, no, I, I don't hate that. I think they're good. Um, we're not going to spend all day talking about Soul Tie or these um, no. top decks. But let's talk about some underrated decks. Um, give me an underrated deck in standard where you think this deck needs to get some more love. Honestly, it makes me think cycling might be one of those underrated yeah, decks. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that. yeah, that's one that people... That usually try. always is underrated. It doesn't it seem like a deck... It that's is. not a flashy deck to want to play. Yeah. It's not very... Um, it, yeah. th there's a lot of thinking. I'm not saying the deck is a non-skill attempt, so I, I will never say a deck doesn't take yeah, skill. Yeah, we both played a little bit of it in the past. Um, well, obviously, um, after this weekend, I would hope that Mono White gets, gets more respect and love, but honestly, it might not. It's an aggro deck, and people tend to not respect those for a few weeks, usually. Um, but it did just win the event, so it'll get talked about, and people's eyes will be on it. Um, I, I think I'm just, instead of uh, focusing on one deck that I think is underrated, one card that I think... Oh, we're going to be getting an underrated card okay. in a minute. Okay, I was just enough. talking about decks for the okay. first part. Okay, all right, I'll I wait a, on the card. Yeah. I've been, it's on I've our been itinerary, jumping, don't worry. I've been jumping at the opportunity to... Oh, I know. We, 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 uh, but anyway, the um, I, I, I guess Mono White, sure. Mono White was very underrated going into the weekend. I didn't even think it was a deck at all. Mono Red's another one. Um, that was underrated going into the weekend. Obviously, no one was talking about it, uh, especially me. Like I said, wrote an article that I put on our team site, and when I was talking about the decks I was going to play this weekend, I thought that Rakdos would be a rough matchup and Grohl would be a match a rough matchup, and I didn't even take into consideration the fact that Mono Red and Mono White were decks. So you know, like you were you were saying before we even got on the podcast, pros were saying that Rogues ended up being a really bad deck to play this weekend, and it was. A really bad deck to play this weekend. Not because it's not good against Sultai. It is still good against Sultai. Yeah. Um, but the problem is all the other decks that were good against Sultai are also good against you and people gravitated to the, the, towards those this weekend um, more so than than other stuff. Um, yep. So it ended up being a, a, a tough tough week at the office um, for To Rose. say the least. Yeah. Because um, even in my event I played... I got a, I got a free win against Gruul. That one doesn't even count. Uh, I played against Mono Red twice, would have played against Gruul twice. My opponent didn't show up because melee issues, whatever. Um, and then uh, I did play Soul Type once. Um, I'm going to say Rakdos only here's my mindset behind it. I think Rakdos should be playing four Necromanches. Okay. I could buy that. I feel like if they play a full grip of that card, right? Yeah. I honestly don't think Rakdos' matchup with um, Aggro is horrible. Oh, it's probably good. Yeah. I, I think this is a great weekend for um. next week. Rakdos might be a sweet deck to so, play. So, I play Rakdos, and I play four Necromancer in the sideboard. Okay. I because I think I respect, because I don't, I think you could be Ultimatum if they don't have Ultimatum. Yeah. I firmly am going to stand behind that mindset. 
You, if you could necromancy, if you necromancy him twice, I think you're locked to win. It's going to be really hard for him to beat. Um, yeah. So that's that'd be my game plan playing Rakdos. For the love of God, if y'all see this on Twitter, there's people that post these wet Rakdos lists. Oh Lord, don't do that to yourselves. I spent a couple hours playing that deck, and I probably played like eight matchups or something like that. Every time I had a blue source when I needed to bring a cro- Croxa back, I wanted to shoot myself. Yeah. Don't do it to yourself. I'm out here taking the pain for everyone else. Yeah. But let's talk about some cards now. Yep. You've been wanting to jump at this all show. Okay. Yes, I have. Um, so we already did a, a video a few days ago in Historic and talked about how good this card was in Historic, how impressive it was. Um it's available on YouTube right now if anybody wants to catch it. Yep. Definitely go on there and watch it. Yep, it's it awesome. is. We won with 62 cards. That's the title. Yeah. Uh, anyway, but Faceless Haven um, last week got very, very little love. It saw a little bit of play in um, the Blue Red deck, which mm-hmm. we've talked about. And at first, it was only being what played. Was it Blue Red? It was, yes. Okay. Uh, LSV moved up to three copies by, by, by I think it was LSV. Uh, but anyway, that Where deck, it was, they were smart. Exactly. That iteration of the deck started playing three copies of that card. It started at one and then went to three because uh, that deck especially lacked uh, pressure to really win games in a lot of spots. If Goldspan wasn't resolving or was getting killed or whatever, the deck really didn't have a good clock. So that land was really, really important in a deck that already wants Snow Basics anyway because it's playing Frostbite. Now we look at this week. <clears throat> We've got the Mono White decks. Four, four copies of that card. Yep. Obviously, the card's insane. Super, super good. In a mono color deck. deck. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mono red, four copies. And I guess uh, a deck that really didn't see a ton of love last week, still isn't seeing much love this week, is the mono blue deck. The mono blue deck has been on four the whole time because it just makes sense. It's a mono colored snow deck. We not play the mono red and rules run in the format either. It, you know how much more miserable time you'll right. have. So you got four. We got four on the mono red list, mm-hmm. most of them. Yep. It's insane. Uh, you've got four in these mono white decks, and it, it's starting to really feel like that card is is starting to take off. I don't think um, we're done here at all. I think this card is going to continue finding spaces in different decks. I think this card is going to find space in control decks, mm-hmm. much like Mutavault did when Mutavault two color was, control. It, two color control. Yep, yep. two color control. Three, I, I, not, three not three color control. I don't, yeah, yeah. Don't don't worry about that. Just, but I think like a blue white control deck yeah. or blue black could play this easily. Blue black control. because they were playing Crawling Barons. This exactly. seems better. It is I, because yeah, I, think I think two. Think I think blue black could be really good because. But, so here here's the here's the the I guess the the counter. To this, though, there is one big danger to everybody starting to play all these snowlands, and that would be that the mono white deck has that stupid god that makes all your lands enter tapped if there's snowlands, well, right? That that card's already going to be that such card, a hard. Yeah, it's not going to change. It's always it's already going to hurt you yeah. in um in it's, the matchups because now it's going to hurt you more. <laughs> well, here's so either my, way, like when you're playing control, like if it's blue black control, for example, yeah. The situation where that comes out on turn three, and you can't, you're still going to have to play a two drop anyway, because then yeah. all your four drops are six anyway. So those aren't even cards I anymore. Know. Yeah. So your heartless X and everything are still on because you got two mana at least already. Yeah. yeah. So I don't think it changes your situation that much. Probably not a ton. No, um, not enough because anything that you want to do, you're you're tapped down anyway. Yeah. Um. Anyway, Basil Saving is great. Uh, I think we're gonna see it get spots in more and more lists. I wouldn't be surprised at all if mono green aggro decks start playing for this card. Just all not the mono underrated deck aggro. right now. What'd you say? That's a deck that's actually kind of underrated right now. It is. Um, and to be fair, uh, the way it's built is probably going to look like you might not Ooh. want to play Yorvo anymore Ooh. if you're playing Faceless Haven because uh, it's triple green, obviously. So you might kind of change your spell your spell package. Yeah, you can um, easily... You, know, well, not, you can edit it. There, there are plenty of other... You don't drops. have to play Yorvo. No, you but don't. But the problem is, do you play that triple green guy that... You want to play the guy that comes back. Yeah, that card's... So great. that's problematic. Like, is that one three green as well? Yeah. That's an issue. That is an issue. Um, um, so, yeah, the deck will have to find a way to... Maybe you play a 25th land or something. And that is possible. To, but maybe it's not because you're a four-castle deck. Yeah. 
I don't know. I don't yeah, know. it's just, a, or maybe you just go up like an extra three drop or so, and so you can make sure you have a three drop play. Yeah, I feel like there's though, so many things that you can do. I feel like a lot of lists want to start playing this card. This card is really good, and not playing it seems really foolish. And I, I really think this card is, you know, we we mentioned on on our video that it isn't mute vault, but it's pretty damn close. It's it is the getting this thing we have had to mute vault yet. It is much better than every other man land that we have seen um, until this point. And to be fair, it should be. There is a, a good amount of cost you have to pay in playing this card and being a bunch of snow lands. But fortunately, monocolored decks can do it very easily. And like you said, two color decks can also do it fairly easily. Um, and I think, I think we're going to see this card become more and more popular. For sure. It's really, really impressed me so far. Um, it's a very important piece to a lot of these decks. So, Yeah, no, 100% agree. Um, I th I've i been selling that card since the beginning because before we, we even started playing with the new card, I was playing Zombies and Historic, and then I found out it was Changeling. Yeah. Then I found out it was Vigil, and I learned it all like like slowly, and I'm like, oh, this card's super good. Yeah. I didn't realize it until I swung with like an 8-7, and I was like, oh... Okay, guys. Yeah. Um, I think that card is just so good. I don't. I think it's my favorite card of the set, easily. Um, just because it can be, it can fit in so many different decks. I love co versatile cards. Yeah. I like cards I don't need to play one deck. Like yeah. when the ultimatums came out, there were going to be only a deck or two for those. Um, I do think a, a card that's really cool is Coma. We've mentioned that. Um, again, I'm referencing Jeff Hogan a lot today. I've never been the biggest fan, but he's had some cool decks this week. Yeah, I mean, he always has um, cool decks. It's like one he of He had things. a Just Guy Luka where you're just looking in the comas. Oh, that's fine. Um, I love the take, playing the Chrome Wars. Uh, you take control of your opponent's creature, and then you sack them to the Luka or the Transmogify or whatever, and then you go and get a coma. Mm. Like, it was kind of cool. That's and, really disgusting. That's <laughs> really yeah. disgusting. That's it, funny. Yeah, now that, that looks like a fun deck. That's pretty cool. Like, <laughs> fun times. But no, overall, um, I don't know if there's any other cards I could think of offhand that are underrated. Um, I'll tell you what one's overrated, Goldspan Dragon. That card is very good, but I just think, well, at least in, in our neck of the woods, it's been overrated. <laughs> you know it's, why it's, it's great. You know why it's not putting up the results right now? People aren't playing them in, in enough Yorion decks. <laughs> it's another inside joke for listeners. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, the card is really, really good. I just feel like in, in our inner circle, uh, it's just been, like, really... It's been all the talk. Like, if you're not so playing absurd. this card, you're not going to win. Yeah, like, it's absurdly overhyped, and it literally isn't in, like... And it's like a two of in these red lists in some of them. Exactly, you know? like... It, it's good. It, it's a great card. And would that deck be losing anything if they didn't play If they play played it? two less and played four Torbrand, I don't know. Like, um, exactly. Yeah, that, that's the question. Who knows? Uh... But yeah, it's it's um it's a little a little overrated. I you know I think an underrated card would have to be that one mana blue creature that and levels up. Um, the thing is, I think the card's really good. I just think it's not going to be good in a world of aggro because no. I don't think mono blue can beat aggro. No, no I don't. Um, I've played mono blue. I played all the project list for yeah many events. Yeah. You can't beat Mono White. That was, yeah, that was like not, the worst matchup for me was when that Mono White deck was the same. That's not the deck you want to play against in an aggressive field. Um, now, to be fair, the, the format will will settle. Things will get less aggressive, so it might, it might have a time eventually. Um, but yeah, no, right now, probably not what you want to be picking up for like next weekend or whatever if you're expecting all these aggro decks. It just doesn't seem quite good enough. I agree. Um, but I do, I do think that card is really, really good, um, and not talked about all that much. I agree with you one hundred percent on that, my friend. I will say, um, what's going to be super nice is we're going to get to see more cards being played because there's going to be more events and yeah. the future is to be determined. Mm -hmm. But what is to be determined doesn't need to be determined for this week. Is the Arena Open is making its return ah, to yes. Magic Magic Arena. Yep. Um, and it's going to be a new one because usually they flip-flop between Standard and Historic. People have have 
sent in their requests. And damn it, Wizards, during this pandemic, they have been listening pretty well. I'm going to give them that because they came out with an idea that everybody's been cramming for. Because the one thing that we've been missing is good competitive limited. Yep. And they said we're going to do an arena open based around limited. Yeah. Now, I didn't look in the details. Have you? I haven't either. No. Let's see if we can find those real quick. Because I know it's limited, but how are the formats going to go? Because you know there's like best of three. Is it going to be draft? Is it going to be just sealed? It's going to be se- I think it's going to be sealed because they said sealed. They didn't say draft or limited. They just they said sealed. So to me, that would okay. signify that day one certainly will be sealed. I would assume both days will be sealed, but who knows? Maybe it's sealed day one and then You're draft right. day two. That would all be right. awesome if it was like a GP used to be. I would be all about that. All right, we'll feature best of one and best of three gameplay in the limited seal format for the first time in history of MTG Arena. Competitive players are used used to playing tabletop tournaments or include limited to ensure integrity. This is the definition. Okay, seal. Uh, the reopen begins at 8 a.m. their time, ends at 5 a.m. their time. Entry of 22,500 gold or 4,500 gems. Um, players can compete in either best of one or best of three limited sealed format during the first day. So it will be just six booster packs. Do your thing. Yeah. The win. Um, if you get zero to two wins, no gems. Three wins, four hundred gems. Four wins, eight hundred gems. Five wins, twelve hundred. Six wins, sixteen hundred. Seven wins, you advance to day two and get two thousand gems. Mm-hmm. Here are the rewards for best of three sealed for day one. Zero wins, you get no gems. One win, 1,000 gems. 2,500 gems for two wins. Three wins, 5,000 gems. Four wins, you advance to day two and 5,000 gems. Uh, No more than three losses in best of one or four wins with no more than one loss. So in best of three, you can only get one loss. You have to four one. Yes. Um, Day two (laughs) arena open will invite to the upcoming qualified... Competitors who get five to seven wins will get the qualification for uh-huh. the qualifier. Yeah. Best of three, they'll get six new booster packs. So, so more it's sealed. A, a whole new sealed event. This event's going to be so awesome, man. Oh, this I'm is really gonna... looking forward to this. Oh, yeah. We're going to be doing some sealed, like, Yeah, we might videos. make a video right after this oh, podcast, we're gonna, yeah. actually. I mean, yeah, yeah we're, we're definitely going to be playing with a teammate. But, yeah, I think we should just all yeah. three of us make a video after oh, we're yeah. done with the current one. I definitely love doing some sealed. Yeah, me too. But, yeah. Oh, and then um, just to recap. So, the day two prize is it's um, zero wins, no reward. One win, you get 2,000 gems. So, if you get one win, you probably got your value back. Um, two wins, you get 4,000 gems. Three wins, 6,000 gems. Four wins, 10,000 gems. Five wins, you get the 20,000 gems. And then invite to the qualifier weekend event they do that you usually got to get top 1,200 to qualify for. Yeah. Six wins, you get $1,000 cash. Not gems, but cash. Sick. And an invitation to the qualifier weekend. If you get seven wins, you get $2,000 cold hard cash. And an invitation to the qualifier weekend. Yeah. This is going to be awesome. I am so excited for this. Other rewards include a Vornicle Monstrous Raider card style upon entry and gems depending on the number of wins you get. Yada, yada. Also, I'd like to make sure people know this. If you make day two, please make sure you get registered by a certain time. Yeah, we, we include this on a lot of, uh, on all these, like, Pre, Only because we made the mistake. Pre-open podcast because we have screwed that up before because we're morons. But regardless, yes, make sure you pay They go from 8 a.m. on their time to 10 a.m. on their time. Yeah. And it's um CT, so I don't know what that equals out to. Pretty much it's usually telling you have by 1 o'clock, 1 p.m. to get signed Basically up. set alarm. 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah. So make sure that you get set up. Double check. It's going to send you reminders. Just make sure you don't do like we did and miss out and lose some value. Yeah. But with that being said, Steven, are you ready to do some limited this week? Oh, yeah, man. Very. And then next week, we don't have the topic or anything to say, but no, we will be bringing you another hit show next week, and we'll have them launched every Monday as we have been. But I don't have anything else. Steven, do you no. have any final words you'd like I'm to say? I'm ready to go play some sealed. Yeah, I'm ready to play some ready sealed to go play as some well. Limited, so. But until next time. That's been Steven. This has been Larry. This has been Talking Swish, and we will catch you later. Catch you later.
Hey guys, thanks for watching another video brought to you by Swish Gaming and Swish Videos. Go ahead and give us a follow over on Twitter at, at SwishMTG. Also look for us on Facebook under Swish Gaming as we'll have more material information about some deck lists and so forth all available on there free of charge no patreon required also if you're listening to this on youtube check out these related videos that we have right here we have various things such as local matchups from draft to constructed on the arena format and the occasional magic the gathering online but until next time we will catch you later